Hi there, it's almost March, so you know what time it is. We've got the notebook all ready, so let's plan the bullet journal setup for March. This month's theme is Easter, and we're going for a slightly darker, more muted colour palette. It's a super chilled video, so grab yourself a cup of tea and let's relax together. This month's theme is Easter, but when I say Easter I don't necessarily mean based around religion, it's more like the stereotypical things associated with Easter and springtime. Things like cute small animals, bunnies, carrots, eggs. I'm also using some strawberry stickers that I got because I felt like they needed to fit in somewhere and it kind of works with this theme so there's quite a few strawberries as well. That's just because I had the stickers in and I wanted to use them but the theme is mostly Easter. This time around we're using gouache again. I used it for the February spread and it was so much fun. The paper didn't warp. It was opaque, I could make whatever fun colours that I wanted and so I wanted to use gouache again for this one. One thing I did miss in the February spread was doing collaging though, so I've included a little bit more in this one. Just a little bit of paper where it kind of fit the theme. Collaging is something that I've been really exploring a lot lately, and I've even been incorporating it into the paintings that I do. I did a Valentine sketchbook session and a winter sketchbook session recently, and in both of them I used paint, pastels, pencils, and also collaging, I used paper washi stickers and I love that combination of everything, like a full mixed media spread. I just think it's such a fun look and it's also so fun to create them. So this one has a little bit more collaging in it. The colour palette is a lot darker than I'd intended. As the theme is Easter, I would have loved to use pink or even yellows. But through these bullet journal setups, I'm actually realising that I'm not very experimental at all in my colour palettes. Every bullet journal setup I've done, I've wanted to use pastels, pinks, blues. The idea of using yellows, orange, green, darker shades doesn't even cross my mind. And honestly, even just a few months ago, I wasn't certain that I had any kind of art style. But especially now that I'm bullet journaling and having to choose set colour themes, whatever I'm drawn to, I'm realising that I really do, especially when it comes to colour. I can see what I naturally gravitate towards, and for me, it's just lovely pinks, purples, and blue shades. I don't really use warm colour palettes at all, unless I'm actually pushing myself, and there's a theme, and I have to, I won't choose to use them. Sometimes I will spontaneously use different colours in my sketchbook just so that there's a nice flow throughout. Something like the movie sketchbook I have for the scene series. When I pick the movie or TV scene, I do factor in what's on the other side because as a spread, they could just look too similar. So the only time I will really consider colour is when I want my sketchbook to flow and look really good on each page. Like if you're doing a flip through, it actually stands out and looks good. It is especially noticeable on the first few pages of my movie sketchbook where the colour palettes aren't contrasting at all. And even though the paintings themselves are very good, when you look at the sketchbook spread, I just don't think it looks as good. They're strong paintings, but together, they don't really look as good. Whereas something like when I did the elf scene, which is very blue, even though the painting wasn't as strong as the Mandalorian painting I did, because it contrasts so well with the painting that's opposite it, it almost looks better. And that's why I wanted this bullet journal theme to have a different colour palette to the previous ones. January was blue, February was pink, so March is green. And browns, dark reds, it's a very muted, neutral kind of palette. I don't know, they're kind of like soft, dark colours, if that makes any sense. The cover page is definitely green themed though. And when I did the February bullet journal setup, I will leave that one down below if you haven't seen it. I really had to push myself to add yellow and orange tones. I would have used pink for the entire theme. But you know what, I added yellow and I really love how that one turned out. Using pink 
with yellow and peach tones. I think it's just such a fun, pretty color palette. When it comes to a color wheel, I don't really use orange, I don't really use warm red, and anything from a yellow, literally all the way to green, any kind of form of yellow green, I don't really use at all. So today I'm not only really using green, but a dark green, really pushing myself here. I don't know, personally, I think colour is important and for me, sometimes even if I've painted a piece really well, if I don't like the colours, it can really ruin my impression of it. Colour is such a huge factor and if you wing it and just choose whatever colours you want, I don't know, I feel like my paintings never turn out as well when I do that. This theme had to be dark colours though because January was bright colours. February is cutesy, the theme was afternoon tea with pastel and peach tones, I needed some contrast. And I do think this setup has some really unique colours that I've created with the gouache. One thing that I am really enjoying with my setups is doing the cover page as a double page spread. I don't really put anything of use on my cover pages. I know sometimes people do like small calendars or events or something. Mine is literally just a fun set the mood kind of cover spread. I like to set the theme and add elements of what's to come. I guess because I want my setups to be practical, I generally make each of the boxes quite big when it comes to my monthlies and my weeklies. So unfortunately, on those pages, I'm not able to add very much detail. I can add washi tape and small designs, but something like painting an entire rabbit, I just couldn't do with the space that I would have on the side of a weekly. A really important point for me getting into bullet journaling and actually using it is to make sure that I have enough space and to make sure it actually does what I would like it to do. Whilst I could cut the pages to be smaller and add loads of details and stickers and decoration, it's just really important to me to have enough space to write down everything that I need in it. So the cover page is a place for me to experiment and have fun and pop everything down that I would like to. And the cover page does take a lot longer than every other page that I do for that reason. I would say when I do these setups, I probably spend about 40, 30 or 40% of my time just doing the cover page. The following pages are very quick. When it comes to the layout, I have a few more ideas of ways to do the weeklies, but honestly, I think aside from cutting and doing dutch doors and trying all of those kind of things. I think I've kind of almost covered every way to align the weekly boxes in a different way. When it comes to entire weeks, there's only so many ways that you can fit seven days onto a page and make it look different. And I've got a few more ideas, but we are kind of running out. One thing I have noticed this month whilst I'm using the February setup is that the cute small boxes with lots of decoration around the outside are very nice, but they're not really working so well in journal form. On days that I forget to use it, obviously that's fine, but when there are three or more tasks, I honestly run out of room in the box. There's a fine line between what's cute and what's practical, and I'm currently balancing it to try and figure out what works best for me. I love the look of the February setup, but it doesn't give me much space to actually work with when it comes to writing. For the habit trackers, I'm continuing to put them on the monthly spread. I don't know how I feel about this, I don't know where else I would put them and remember them, but I'm not really remembering to do them on the monthly setup either. I would like to be the kind of person that goes in my bullet journal every evening and circles off that I've done all my habits every single day, but that's just not really working so far. Often the point that I remember to look in my journal and check off what I've done that day is quite early. So at that point, I haven't finished all the water I'd like to drink, and I haven't taken my vitamins, and I might not have gone for a walk. And so that kind of gets missed, and then I'm like, oh, I'll just, I'll remember, I'll remember. And then literally the very next day, I can't even remember what I did the last day. I'm trying to figure out, did I drink enough water three days ago? And I have no clue. I sort of tell myself that I'll remember, and I cannot remember. So I'm not sure about the habit trackers, I'm not sure if they're even worth putting in there at this point. I'm trying to remember, but I tend to look at my bullet journal at the start of the day and in the afternoon and I tend to take my vitamins like at night, so it just doesn't really work out that way. 
I'll keep them in for now, but I think I'm going to add an extra habit next month. I think for April, I'm going to add my daily doodle diary challenge. Having that in the habit section where I can circle off that I've done it every single day. Obviously, I'm planning to do my daily doodle every single day because that's part of the challenge that I'm doing for this year. I'm attempting to draw every single day of the year. And I do actually have the first video up on my channel now. I will leave it down below. It's a long one, but it's fun. It's all of the art that I've created in January for the daily doodle diary. But the way that I've edited it as each day or every other day with the date coming up on screen it kind of feels like a diary i don't know if that comes across but i'm really happy with how that's gone and i'm always filming for future ones so i think there'll be quite a few videos by the end of the year saying that because i am planning to do it every single day and if i can do it every day it's quite an achievement i think if i add it to my habit trackers i'm gonna want to circle it off because it's kind of an achievement so maybe in the next one that will make me more likely to actually circle off the habits i mean i'm doing a lot of the habits i just don't remember to circle them off to say that i've done them i have so many different stickers now and i think upping the quantity that i have has really helped me be able to use them in my bullet journal it feels freeing having a lot of stickers because you feel like you can just use them up as I said, I picked out the strawberries because I didn't know what other theme they would possibly fit in. Those ones are from my Timu haul, and the clear botanical plant stickers are from my Shein haul. I really love these, and I don't have many clear stickers, but I think they work really well in the bullet journal spread because you can see the gouache underneath. I'll have to have a look and see if I have any more clear stickers because I love this effect. And I think these clear stickers look so much better than the strawberry ones with the white background just because you can't see the gouache underneath in those ones. For this setup, I have ended up making the brain dump section a little bit smaller. It just kind of worked out this way because of how long the final week is. I am currently still doing my weeklies as the month begins rather than from each Monday. I know that's how nobody else does their bullet journals, everyone else does it like from Monday and each month has like four weeks in or something. But for me it just made sense for the next month to start on the 1st. But that does mean each of my spreads look a little bit odd because like the March one starts on a Friday. It's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the following week, which is a little bit odd. I know no one else does that. But especially when it comes to adding the habits, I thought it would be a little bit odd to be circling off the habits in the March month whilst filling out like the Friday in the February month. I don't know, I just found that a little bit odd. So at the moment, I'm still doing my weird mishmash weeklies, but it means that the entire month is tied together, so it's kind of working out. I like it. It makes more sense to me. One thing I did want to talk about was if you saw my first bullet journal video where we did the 2024 setup together, I said that I ordered these notebook therapy journals, but I had to get a replacement and would give an update, and I kind of forgot. So the yellow journal that we're using is absolutely fine, but I also ordered a purple one. I ordered two so that I could get the free delivery because it was quite expensive otherwise. And the purple one arrived with small white marks on it that I scrubbed a little bit but just couldn't get off. Well, I contacted them and they said they'd send a replacement, which was nice. That took a while to arrive. Well, both orders did, both took a while to arrive, but when it finally did arrive, I opened it and the second replacement purple journal has dents in the corner. I think it got bashed about in transit because the box inside the package also had indents in the corner. My partner had already claimed one at this point, so I had to pick whichever one would be best for next year because it's on camera, so I would like it to ideally not look scuffed up. Um, and he'd have the other one. Turns out the first one is actually somewhat better because the second one that arrived had so many dents in the corner that it, it was so noticeable, it would be noticeable on camera. I mean, hoping that I'm still doing YouTube next year, hopefully. Then yeah, that one, that one had a lot of dents in it. So I've ended up going for the first one that has the white marks on it, but it's still really unfortunate. Because I think the second one was damaged during delivery, I felt like I couldn't really contact for a second time. But yeah, I have two faulty purple journals. 
I just thought it was worth mentioning because it was a hassle. The journals are expensive and if they're easily being damaged in transit for the cost, is it really worth it? I mean, I would hope that they'd add more protective packaging so that that doesn't happen. Because it is kind of a flimsy cardboard box with some honeycomb paper and I mean clearly that isn't really cutting it. So yeah, it's just not been a great experience, that on top of watercolour not really being a success in the journals, and then being really expensive. If I didn't already have one for next year, I would look elsewhere, so I just thought I'd mention it, but obviously there is still time, I might change my mind on the journals, but the shipping wait time and the quality of the journals when they arrived just wasn't great. Looking forward to the April setups, now that we've got the dark theme out of the way, we can move back to colour. The next theme is floral and I'm thinking bright colours with collaging. I have lots of floral themed scrap of paper, washi, stickers, so we might as well use all of those. I've also got some lovely bright Posca pens, which I think would work well. We've got like a bright pink, purple, yellow, green. You might have seen them already on some of my setups. So I think the next one's going to be good. We're basically going to throw everything that I own at it and hopefully it will look cool. I hope you've liked having a little look at my bullet journal setup for March. We're going to be experimenting a lot this year. It's my first year bullet journaling, so I want to try as many different mediums and styles that I can. Lots of different themes and colours, just experimenting all round. So if you don't want to miss any of that, please make sure you're subscribed. On Thursday, we've got a super exciting video, so I would love to see you there. Take care of yourself and have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.